Hey there everyone, I hope you're well. Today we thought we'd take a look back at 2020 and pick our personal favourite top 5 games of the year. These are the games that we played and enjoyed the most. Now 2020 hasn't been the best year for many reasons, but we look forward to a much better 2021 and wish you all a very happy new year. I have James and Jordan here with me letting you know our personal favourites and it would be great if you could add yours in the comments section down below. With that in mind, I start off with my number 5. Five, Streets of Rage 4. Now the Streets of Rage franchise has a special place in my heart. Streets of Rage 2 was a game I played over and over again back in the 90s and I loved being able to play with a friend locally. Now I was really looking forward to Streets of Rage 4 and it didn't disappoint. I would say that the revival of the series was a great success. Yes, it brought back that nostalgia vibe, has a fantastic soundtrack, wonderful visuals, and in my opinion, kept that gameplay that was so addicting in the originals. Playing with a friend locally was great fun and you can even play online too. And this was one of my favorite games in 2020 on the Switch. I was super glad that I also picked up the physical from Signature Edition games to add to my collection. All right, so starting off with my number five, this year I've tried my best not to include old ass ports, so as much as I love to put Super Robot Wars X and Tokyo Mirage Sessions in here, I'm trying to go for something, you know, a bit newer. And with that, for number five, I'm gonna go for a remake of a Super Nintendo JRPG. In my review of Trials of Mana, I may have not come across as overly enthusiastic about it. Maybe I got the tone wrong on that since I did actually like the game quite a lot. Definitely enough to make my top five Switch games of the year. It's home to some of the worst voice acting ever, and the budget put into it was probably about like 1% of Square's other remake this year, Final Fantasy VII. But, you know, on the Switch, you've got yourself a fine time with this game. JRPG fans definitely need this one. Plenty of content for the price, considering there's, you know, different story options depending on your cast of characters. Hey, how's it going, folks? It's James here. Now, 2020 has been a year to forget for sure, but one shining light amongst all the strife has been the escapism of gaming. There have been a bunch of new games and quality ports onto the Switch this year, and it's the latter that takes my number five slot in XCOM 2 collection. XCOM 2 is one of the best strategy games ever, in my opinion, so when it was announced for the Nintendo Switch, we were massively excited about the prospect of playing this game on the move. Virtuous managed the port, bringing us the collection version that has the base game plus four DLC packs and the War of Chosen expansion all in one package. The turn-based tactical strategy gameplay fits right at home in handheld and the addition of HD Rumble is a bonus. The only downside is the game chugs a little bit when maps get busy and the graphics take a bit of a hit, but as a turn-based game it's not a huge detraction. Having such a complete strategy game on the Switch is a real plus and definitely worth its spot on this list in my opinion. Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is a game that was a complete surprise to me and is my number four. A game made by a very small team is one thing, but for it to be as accomplished as this is absolutely fantastic. Here we have a 2D action platformer which is pretty fast and furious mixed in with some 3D farming combines to make a game that was super enjoyable and addictive. Throw in voice acting in both Japanese and English, tight controls and gameplay which is satisfying along with great visuals and there is not much more that I can say than this is a game that's worth everybody's time. I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick this one up from Amazon. For you physical collectors out there this is definitely worth adding to your collection. At number 4, I'm going to go for a rhythm game, Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix. This is a sort of best of compilation featuring over 100 songs and it's fantastic. I was not a fan of Vocaloid music and I did not care about like the cutesy character. I didn't get the whole culture. Now that I've played it, it all makes sense. Great game. Bottles hard for me, but very enjoyable. So much variety and challenge. Rhythm fans will definitely need to pick this one up. Check out my review from earlier in the year if you'd like to know more about it and enter the weird, wonderful world of Hatsune Miku. The Metro series offers a unique and thrilling experience combining survival horror, first-person shooting and stealth. Set in the bleak, post-apocalyptic metro system of Russia and occasionally the toxic surface, Metro 2033 and Last Light are the first two titles in this series and 4A Games did a superb job in lovingly porting the Redux versions to the Switch in-house. Now I reviewed both of these games earlier this year and thoroughly enjoyed my time with both titles which you can pick up 
in either a single physical edition or individually on the eShop where you can from time to time find a nice sale on. The story is based on Dmitry Kukovsky's novels and the source material is brilliant. The dark and bleak world is recreated well and the story that unfolds is gripping. The soundtrack works perfectly as well and these games are just excellent either on the move or when docked. If you're after an FPS experience then my number 4 pick is worth looking at for sure. My number 3 is Carry On. I love horror games and Metroidvania games. Combine the two and I will almost buy anything. But a game where you control a monster trying to escape by consuming humans to grow and that has something which captivated me from the beginning. It's grotesque, the gameplay mechanics felt unique, controlling multiple tentacles to cause destruction. This was an absolute winner that consumed me from start to finish. Another Devolver Digital published game which was an absolute gem. Number three for me, well, it's another rhythm game. Sorry, I didn't plan on, you know, having so much rhythm goodness this year. Takuna Tatsujin Rhythmic Adventure Pack, Pips Hatsune Miku by a hair. This happy-go-lucky simple rhythm gameplay is a joy to behold. There's two games in here technically, both of which not only include the standard Taiko gameplay we all know and love, but two simple but very fun adventure modes, kind of like JRPGs. Highly recommended if you enjoyed the first Taiko game on the Switch. This pack is just as essential for rhythm fans and i know these are old ass games originally on the 3ds but this is the first time they have been in english check out my review to get more information on this hyrule warriors age of calamity is in at number three for me the musu gameplay from koei tecmo is combined with zelda breath of the wild expertly recreating the style and content nicely What's great is that this story takes place at the Great Calamity that is so often referenced in Breath of the Wild, so we really get to see what that time was like and it expands on that, our story and understanding of the game. The way the game lovingly drops in a large raft of characters and their moves and style works seamlessly as well, as little details like the ability to cook and how different elemental attacks are taken from the source, the way that you get to use Link Shield. It's just brilliant. Progression is handled well as also you can level each character but using them more will garner you more weapons and then fusing them together with a seal system makes them stronger. All of this background and styling is cool, but of course, no Dynasty style game would be worth its salt if the action didn't live up to scratch, and it does. The controls are solid and the action is really fast paced. The ability to lock onto targets and dodge them works really well, and altogether, this game expands the world that we so cannot wait for part two on whilst being a deep game in its own right. A really healthy mix and lots of hours to enjoy in this one. I have a different outlook on life now and Hades is my number two which could have easily been my number one if it were not for my daughter. You see games are all about experiences and enjoying those games with family members and friends and that's why this is my number two and not my number one today because of course my daughter's always gonna win. Hades though is an absolutely sensational game from the fantastic supergiant games that brought us Bastion, Transistor, Empire. Hades is a roguelike action playing game but unlike any you have ever played. Those of you that say you don't like roguelikes think again because this will change your mind. It has that super addictive fluid gameplay that begs you to have another go. Fantastic characters you meet along the way, awesome visuals, sound effects and a soundtrack that is an absolute absolute gem on this game. It's a must buy and one of those games that we gave a 10 out of 10 in our review. If you want to see that, click on the top right hand banner now. My number two is my surprise of the year, Banner of the Maid, the indie game from nowhere pretty much. This Chinese developed game is a love letter to tactical strategy games but with its own distinct flavour. Mixing Fire Emblem tactical gameplay with a Final Fantasy Tactics feeling, this is a great time for strategy fans. Really nice story set in an alternative French revolution, it even includes small visual novel elements with you know, fantastic character art. I can't praise this game enough, it has challenge, it has its puzzle elements to some battles, different gimmicks and ideas, it's great. I know not everyone agrees with me on this one, but I stand by this game to the death. I loved every minute of it. My number 2 Switch game of the year, Banner of the Maid. 
You've got to start by saying that Doom Eternal is a brutal, fast-paced and punishing FPS. Yes, exactly what the series is known for and this sequel to the 2016 remake is superb, which is why this is in at number 2 for me. From the opening credits where Doomslayer has been off-world fighting hordes of demons only to find that his homeworld has been overrun, your pulse gets racing, you drop in guns blazing to some heady metal music and boom. It's action time, baby. This is a visceral experience by design. The only way is to push forward and you are encouraged to jump in and attack enemies rather than holding back. As a new game that was made for newer consoles, there of course needs to be a downgrade to the visuals or the performance. Panic button are at the helm of this port and as we know they do fantastic work. Here they have used adaptive resolution. It's a sensible decision given the fast paced action. The result is that the frame rate stays locked at 30 and feels fast. The graphics take the hit Dipping down to lower quality as needed given the fast paced nature, this works just fine for me. Doom Eternal manages to recreate that feeling you had when playing this series over the years whilst feeling fresh at the same time. A great game for sure. My number one, my top game of 2020 is Animal Crossing, a fantastic game that can be played by the whole family and is one of those games that my daughter and I probably put the most hours into together. What can be said about it that hasn't already been said? This or Hades could have easily been my number one and the only reason this edges it for me is because it's a game that I've had so much fun playing with my young daughter. A deserted island that you can mold how you like, lots of things to do like fish, catch bugs, fill your museum, all while sharing your creation with friends. It's a fantastic experience and my number one game of 2020. Okay, number one. Well, if I'm going to be honest, my favorite game of this year by a country mile was the Final Fantasy VII Remake. But as this is a Switch-related list, my favorite Switch game of the year is Moon. Yes, Moon. Moon is my favorite Switch game of the year. Now, I don't care that this game originally came out in 1997. That ain't stopping me from putting it as my number one 2020 game of the year. My excuse is that 2020 is the year it finally got an official translation to English. From the quirky minds at Onion Games, this is a sweet, beautifully made adventure game. The anti-RPG, as you follow in the carnage caused by a so-called hero, saving the souls of the slain wildlife and helping the people of this very much alive world way ahead of its time it's such a breath of fresh air to play even today you know taking it at your own pace every day finding something new helping a new creature and it has a really sweet natured theme of love to it a magical experience my number one switch game of 2020 moon it took Moon Studios five years to follow up the stellar Ori and the Blind Forest with Ori and the Will of the Wisps and it was worth the wait. This manages to build on the original in every way and this masterpiece is my number one pick this year. The sequel takes place after the events of the first game and this time you are out to save Ku the Owl. Somehow for a game without a whole lot of dialogue it manages to get across emotions and evokes feelings strongly. Partly down to the superb world building and graphics that have most definitely been upgraded and partly down to the musical score and sound effects. This metroidvania platformer sucks you in from the beginning and holds your attention the whole way from start to finish. Talking about visuals, the game is beautiful with so much detail in backgrounds and lightings. The game's mechanics are fine tuned and impressive and the move to the Switch has been done perfectly. For me, this was just the best journey I had on the Switch in 2020 and one of the best games out there, I would definitely encourage everyone to pick this epic up. Ladies and gentlemen, they were our favourite games of 2020, but what were yours? Let us know in the comments section down below and if you're not already part of our Discord conversations, then why not join us and we can talk all about games in 2021. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, would very much appreciate it. And if you are a new watcher, hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss another video. James, Jordan and I would love to take this opportunity to thank you for all of your support within the last year or more for those of you that have been with us since the beginning. We very much appreciate all of our members, subscribers and those of you that watch our videos till the very end. It means so much to us and we are humbled by how many of you continue to support us. It's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. 
have a great New Year's celebration and we hope that you, your families and your friends have a fantastic 2021. We'll certainly be back and we look forward to providing even more content that you enjoy. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.